Hello everyone and welcome back to another high level match of StarCraft 2. Now what I've got for you today is not a best of 3, it's not a best of 5, but it's a best of 7 series of top level StarCraft. We don't see a lot of best of 7s because they can take forever to complete. I don't know how long this video is gonna be. I've got about 2 hours to record, so I think I'm good. Hopefully, fingers crossed. The reason for that is because this is the grand finals of the StarCraft II Masters Europe edition. So the StarCraft II Masters Summer European Regional, that's the full name of the tournament. I'll explain the format in just a second. But first off, in game number one, we find ourselves on the map Neo Humanity and spawning right here in the top left hand corner, playing with the blue Protoss probes. We have the number one Protoss in the world right now. He's from Denmark and he goes by the name of Max Pax. His opponent in the opposite corner with the red Zerg drones, he's from Finland, he's the number one Zerg, but also the number one one, or the number one one, the number one player in the world overall. He goes by the name of Serral. I'm so excited, I've got so much to talk about, I, I want to get it over with before this game properly starts up. Okay, so normally, historically, these replays, they wouldn't be available for another month or so. So shout out to ESL for already releasing them, because this particular series, if you're watching this in the week that it goes live, it was played last Sunday. So the StarCraft II Master Summer is a tournament that takes place over the course of several months. And before the Grand Finals takes place over in Jönköping in Sweden this year, we have regional events that are played online. So there's the European edition, the Americas, and then also the Asian edition. Now this finals is the one from the European region, which is the most competitive one as well. There's of course also the, well, the Korean side of things. Well, well we can get to all of that too. But basically what it comes down to is that this is a best of seven for $20,000. And it also, of course, well, qualifies you to play over in Sweden to participate in the grand finals next month. $12,000 for first place prize, $8,000 for second place. Not a bad day at all, although this is obviously a, uh, a tournament that's been running over the course of the last couple of weeks. So both of these players have already shared plenty of Zerg versus Protoss and Protoss versus Zerg. I mean, Max Pax, of course, plays in practically every online tournament that there is. So I'm sure that Serral is well familiar with what the man's tendencies are at this point. Serral, in general, doesn't play in as many tournaments, but that being said, I mean, he's been playing this game at a super high level for an incredibly long time. He's one of the very few StarCraft II millionaires making over a million dollars in prize money. I think everybody knows the way that Serral likes to play this matchup. And while there might be some smaller differences, some smaller changes that he's made over the last couple of months, overall, I think it's going to be pretty self-explanatory. Serral will likely defend whatever you're going to throw at him. And that starts off in the form of an adept over here. He'll try and defend whatever he can. Already very lovely movement, with the Zerklings in particular, saves the drone, tries to get the rep around, and yeah, that is a dead adept. Okay, so that's a rough start right there for Mexpex. that's not the way you want to play. This is basically what Serral does though, Serral defends whatever you throw at him and then eventually he overwhelms you, he swarms you on your side of the map, that's what he loves to do. Mexpex, of course right now at a new statistical high. When it comes to his win-loss ratio, it's been absolutely incredible over the last couple of months. He's still getting better and better and better. I mean, I've, I've fanboyed over Max plenty over the last few weeks. I'm sure you've noticed it. The guy is getting incredibly good. That said, normally he plays smaller online tournaments. Not tournaments where, well, you can win $12,000, right? That's, that's not bad at all. That's a... You know, a good amount of money right here. Serral, on the other hand, though, Serral doesn't really play a whole lot of the smaller online tournaments because he's already, well, made so much money playing this game. And he probably thinks it's better for him to keep a strict routine, maybe not play games all throughout the night, keep the practice consistent, and really only participate in the bigger events, the bigger tournaments. Because of that, though, Serral is also very experienced dealing with the stress. So... It's very different, for example, playing a, well, a game from a tournament stage compared to playing a game from the comfort of your own home. I mean, I don't really play tournaments myself, but I have tried playing from a location that isn't my home, and it's an absolute disaster. When my, I don't know, my desk height is different, my chair is different, my mouse hand can't move around in the same way. I play like absolute trash. Like, I'm, I'm nowhere even close to these guys in general. But, you know, I've, I've played reasonably well. I got Grandmaster this season. I'm, I'm, I'm alright at the game. When I play from someplace else, uh, yeah, life is a bit of a disaster. And generally, I find that Serral powers up in those scenarios. Serral is very good when it comes to playing from, well, places that aren't his own home. 
For example, if it's like a, a best of five between Serral and Clem, and they're playing offline, I'm favoring Serral 70 to 30, probably. Like 70% in favor of Serral. If it's online, however, since Clem is uh, usually quite a bit better online than he is offline, I mean, he's still very good, obviously, uh, offline too, but I would probably favor it if it's online like 50-50. Serral really seems to be better at, well, playing these big stages and these big tournaments. Um, yeah, better than anybody else. Now, that, that being said, this particular series, obviously, Max Pax is playing. This series was played from home. So these guys are playing from the comfort of their own place, uh, which certainly, uh, yeah, makes things in the dynamic of this finals a little bit different than it ordinarily would be. Um, that being said, though, we're going to see how well these guys participate in Yonshipping when we have the Grand Finals of the StarCraft II Master Summer very soon. Although, I don't think Max Pex is going to be there. I highly doubt it. I would love it, but I don't think he will be. Anyways, what exactly do we have here? Because I've been blabbering onwards. My god, it's been six minutes already. I have looked at the game. Basically, everything's normal, other than that one Adept that ended up going down. We have a little bit of uh, creep clearing over here as well. Serral trying to body block it, but already that Schumer ends up going down. Quick fourth hatchery here from the Zerg. So he's taking that high yield Vespian Geyser. That is a map feature for Neo Humanity in particular. And Serral is definitely gonna keep that one in mind. So far though, the defense has been incredible. Can these get any damage in? Honestly, two drones at this point for the amount of units Max Pax has made. It is not much at all. Serral's now transitioning towards his standard mid game. So that's Roach, Ravager, Link Bane with melee upgrades. This is something he has been doing for a long time, and he's very, very good at it. In the meantime, on the other side of the map, okay. We've got ourselves double upgrades right here for the max packs. Going for a pretty quick fourth Nexus himself as well. He's opened up with those uh, harassment units, right? So the Oracles together with the Adepts. Maybe he didn't deal a whole lot of damage, but economically, he's in a stellar position right now. He would have liked to kill probably closer to two digits worth of workers. That would have been nice, but... He's transitioned right now towards a very normal mid-game for Protoss as well. So, yeah, Blink is already done. Charge is coming up right now. We're going to have, well, Stalkers, Zealots, and Oracles going up against Roaches, Ravagers, and Queens. A couple of Lings and Banes probably in the mix as well. Okay, we have to see pretty much perfect micro, though. And so far, I have seen a couple of units going down. That's also because of the fact that there's a bunch of Lings here at the front. Plus one melee finished up, so suddenly these Lings, they pack a punch. And so far, Serral is doing what Serral does best. Guys, just don't make mistakes, okay? If you're struggling in games of StarCraft 2, have you considered not making... <laughs> have you considered... Nice stasis ward over here. Just stop messing up and play good instead, obviously. These guys are, of course, very quick as well. Max Pax is known to go up to 400 actions per minute on average, too. With Zerk, they use a lot of repeat rates and a lot of uh, rapid firing and all that, so... Maybe the number is a bit inflated. He wants to catch these units as they pop out of stasis, but I actually don't know if that's the right call. Okay, yeah, he's got another stasis ward over there in the back. Good movement right there in the end. Sarah was thinking the same thing, though. He's like, yo, if you're gonna stick around there, I might just get a free surround on you. Perfect overlord here. Charge is not done yet. These units are gonna get intercepted easy peasy. All right. Everything's been going Sarah's way so far. Now, what exactly is the follow-up going to be? Because we don't have a hive or anything along those lines. I think it's just going to be Roach, Ravager, Link, Bane the entire time. Yeah, he's making a whole lot of Banelings right now. That was about 38 Banelings, I believe, I saw on the production tab there. The man is ready to roll. Roll, roll, roll your Banes gently down their base. Aim for all their mineral lines. This is my favorite nursery rhyme. And this honestly might just be a little bit too much, man. This is so much Zerg. My god. He's blown up 14 probes. Apparently, he's going to settle for that. I actually think he could have pushed a little bit harder. Anyways, a lot of links are coming up as well on the back of this. Plus two melee is finishing up. Yeah, Serral can do this thing where he makes look, he makes Zerk look incredibly overpowered. Like, what even really happened in this game? Look at this. This is uh, very one-sided so far. At the very least, I think this Nexus is going to fall. Yeah, you give him an inch, he'll take a mile. Nexus here on the left side also in trouble, and that's another base down. <laughs> Serral's so good at this game, man. It's so funny, because you see those other Zerg players. You know, other players in the top 10, they seem to struggle against, well, Protoss in particular. But Serral's like, yo, just don't take damage early on. 
make a whole lot of drones, and then micro your army basically as well as possible. Okay. I don't know exactly where Serral's win-loss ratio in Zerg versus Protoss is currently at, but there have been tournaments in the past where he literally did not lose against Protoss once. Like, not a single map. He was thinking about getting the probe, but didn't even commit to that one. Alright, Hive is coming up. So what exactly can you do with Hive tech? Well, you can get Adrenal Glands, right? Which is 40% attack speed for Zerglings. Absolutely humongous. Uh, he can also go into a couple of Vipers, so he can stick around on mostly the same unit composition and make all of this quite a bit better. Max Pex is still in this game, but he is running out of juice very quickly here. Yeah. So we have the Robo Facility also going down. More and more of those Banelings are gonna hunt for the Mineral Line. There's the Battery Overcharge. GG is cold though. Sero absolutely stomps Max Pex in game number one. Next up, Ancient Cistern. Certainly some nerfs coming into the game right there for Max Pex. Losing a few units here and there, committing to an harassment heavy opener, but not really getting a whole lot of kills in. <sighs> Serral, putting his money where his mouth is. He mentioned he liked the Eric build. I'm assuming this drone is gonna go straight towards the low ground to become a hatchery. Oh. <laughs> He could have rallied that one. Maybe we need to do a little bit more practice. Anyways, this drone is going to be able to make a hatchery before the probe blocks it. Yep, okay. So Sero had mentioned that he likes the Eric build. But he hasn't actually shown it yet in a tournament. But if he brings it out in the grand finals, he must actually believe that it's good. I mean, I don't think Sero would say, oh yeah, I think that build is great. Out of politeness. But it's good to actually see him executing it. Alrighty, so we've got ourselves a 15 supply hatchery into a 15 supply overlord and then eventually a 15 supply spawning pool as well. The extractor of course allows you to go above the regular amount of supply because every time Zerk makes a structure it costs them the drone. So what you can do is go all the way up to 14 out of 14 supply, make the Vespian geyser with a drone, make one more drone out of a larva and then cancel the extractor that puts you at 15 out of 14. And it turns out in this particular matchup if your opponent, depending on the map, but if your opponent sends out a probe scouter really early, they can't actually block you. So in a map uh, like the one, well, called Ancient Cistern, you can apparently guarantee that the hatchery goes up in the natural expansion without being blocked. That's kind of cool. Now, I highly doubt Sarah was going to go for one of the Eric follow-ups, because Eric would be dropping creep and all kinds of crazy shenanigans. I'm assuming this is going to be a standard third base on the back of it, but... We'll have to keep an eye out on exactly what Serral decides to go for. Cybercore, gonna finish up here momentarily for the Max Packs, and... The Max Packs is then gonna commit to whatever unit composition he wants to go for. He really didn't get a whole lot of damage done in the previous game. I wonder though if he's putting that on the build order or on the execution. So Warp Gate starts up right away, together with the Adept, he's not cancelling it. Uh, he could have gone Twilight Council and Robo already, though. Yeah, I think he's still gonna go for a Stargate, but that's a delayed Stargate opener right now. Normally, Protoss players would be... <laughs> the Zerklings are just gonna scout this. Okay, normally you would be delaying the Warp Gate research, but obviously one added benefit of this opener here for, uh... Well, from Eric, is that you can still get a Zerkling, and so Serral scouts exactly what he's playing against. Okay. The other Zerkling going back home. One bad boy in the main base is gonna sacrifice itself for the swarm, but it'll be happy. It'll be happy to do so. Alrighty, Stargate is gonna finish up here for Max Pex. What exactly is he gonna produce out of it? Could be Phoenixes, but 9 times out of 10, maybe 95 out of 100 times. There you go, it should be an Oracle. Third hatchery in indeed, by the way, here for Serral. He's gone for Link Speed. Pulled two drones out of gas, but that's about it. Now we're saturating the gas geyser once again. Alright. Are we gonna see any changes right now from the Zerk? Three and a half minute Evo chamber? I mean, it is definitely a little bit differently timed, but I don't think, broadly speaking, we're really gonna see any significant changes right here from Serral. Unit composition-wise, the previous game worked out really well for him. 
I'm interested to see if we're once again gonna have a very quick second fort here for Max Specs. Because those uh, double upgrades, they can definitely make the Stalkers look very strong. It's just that your early game also has to go quite well. Okay, don't lose that. Beautiful positioning right there once again by the finisher. By the way, I guess this series really destroys the theory that Max Specs is secretly Serral off racing. I hadn't really considered that yet. They don't play against each other very often, but... Ah. Some people have theorized, since Max Specs doesn't play offline tournaments, that uh, Max Specs is actually several off racing, but... <laughs> Apparently not the case, guys. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, he's gonna commit. I don't mind this. This can deal quite a bit of damage. Oracles, come on, come on, come on. Ooh, okay. The drones are going back nice and quickly, although there's a couple misrallied right now. Alright. Six drones, seven drones. A little bit of uh, skating right there on the drones too for no apparent reason. These drones also went away from their mineral lines for a sec. Well, I guess they stacked up together. This is already a whole lot better right here for Maxi Packs. There's the Forge, there's the Blink. So basically an identical game right here for Max Packs with a couple of small deviations. Third Oracle showing up. These over here not getting too much work done either. Fourth Hatchery. About five and a half minutes into the game. Lair coming up. Roach Warren's about a third of the way done here. Second Gas, third, fourth, okay. There's the second Forge. You love to see it. So, second fort in the main base right now for Max Pax. Um We'll have to see how this plays out. I really like the idea of second fortress, because obviously with the new patch, well, the one that's quite old right now, but at least in StarCraft terms, I mean, entire esports have come and gone since that patch released, I'm pretty sure, but at least in StarCraft terms, uh, this patch is still relatively new. The second forge is gonna allow him to get the upgrades going nice and quickly. Now they are out of sync. I know that this is gonna trigger a bunch of pros players watching, but this may very well be the most optimal way to play it. Hmm, very fast infestation pit over here to get away with a bailing nest. So I'm making a large round of links here. So he's got enough drones for three base saturation, but only with four gas geysers. Protoss going for a fourth nexus right over here too. Stalkers on the other side of the map. Um, I don't think Max Max is aware of the fact that these Zerklings are going all the way around. Yeah, there is one Oracle ready to defend here. But with plus one, these links are gonna bite their way through that Nexus really quickly. Okay. Ooh, not even a cancel. That was a full-on kill. So that's 400 minerals down the drain. Saro not going Roach speed, by the way. Just sticking around on Lings and Banes, and then also going straight into a Hive. I don't know if that's a mistake. I am imagining that it must be a mistake. He sniped quite a few Lings. Not bad. He did get rid of the creep over here. Yeah, Serral desperately relaying that over here too, because it's very easy for Protoss to continuously poke right here with the Stalkers. Okay, here come the links. Good blink backwards. Lovely blink backwards. Those oracles are key here, right? Because the oracles are very good when it comes to zapping out of uh, out of disguise at those zerklings. They can get rid of the links very rapidly. Sace's ward going down too. There's the revelation, allowing him to. I love the combination here. Actually, he doesn't even need revelation. He's got a, an observer over here too. Okay. Ooh, Serral doesn't actually take the bait right over there though. I think Max Pax was hoping he would, uh, he was hoping he would catch a couple more Zerklings than just that small clump. Slow Zealots here once again. Trying to get some work done. Banelings. Ooh, going around the site. This is at the same time as Protoss is fighting over on the right side of the map. And that is gonna cost them. Yep, quite a few of these workers end up going down. That being said though, drones have already fallen as well. This hatchery up north is in a little bit of trouble. The problem right here for Sero is that if he sends a lot of units there to defend against those Zealots, and now there's also Zealots in the main base, he's likely gonna lose the hatchery right over there on the right side. Okay. Yeah, this hatchery may actually just fall. 
So Serral's saying, yo, I'm happy to play four bases versus four bases. Now, by the way, we have Roach Speed coming up, so I think he just forgot it in the heat of battle. It's not the most important upgrade, though, when you don't have any Roaches, or very few. Okay, the Prism does snatch a couple of them before they end up going down. Spore Crawler moved away, now that the uh, Oracles are no longer harassing this. Um, we don't have Adreno Glance, though. Yeah, so the Hive was just made for plus three melee. I think Adrenal Glands might be the more important upgrade. There goes the Prism once again, unloading the Zealots one at a time. Ling's over here trying to be annoying. Bane Ling's, I'm assuming? Yeah, judging by the speed on the minimap. They're gonna try and go after the mineral line once more. Serral, though, not paying attention to this because he's trying to micro at home. Good defense right there by Max Pax, warping in the units at the perfect moment. Fifth Nexus going down at the bottom of the map. There are a couple Ling's just sort of staring this down. Not actually sending units yet in that direction. Zealot warping in the main base. Don't lose the prism. Don't lose the prism. Don't lose. He loses the prism. Okay. Still gonna get a couple queens. In the meantime, we also have a fight happening over here. Five queens have gone down in total in this game. But this should create a little bit of stability right here for Serral. So I did see a robo facility on the production tab. But we only have a single, or a Robo Bay Rotter, we only have a single Robo Facility. So, if the Robo Facility right now is to make a Prism again, that is quite annoying. Here come the Banelings once again. Serral's relentless with the Baneling roll by. He's trying to almost create a surround right here on all of these... He could have picked up the probes in the Prism. Anyways, they're gonna be okay here in the end. Zealots once again, all the way up north. Stalkers over here once again, all the way down south. There's a Stasis Ward here, Serral does spot it. Okay. What about... What about a, a Spire and then one Corruptor? Because <laughs> these Prisms have been incredibly annoying over Serral. I think he's lost more than the 300 or so resources it would take. 300-300. To, uh... <laughs> to the Prism, but anyways. Trying his best to get rid of this once again. Lovely little bit of multitasking here, though, from the Maxi Packs. Sure, he's lost a bunch of probes, and he once again lost a bunch, apparently. I, I missed it this time around. He still has 62. And with this many Nexi, he can actually rebuild quite easily. Hydra then has come up just now. Uh, still no Adreno Glance, so it's really just for plus three. Okay, yeah, we're gonna go into a Lurker then. Fair enough. But if the plan was Lurkers, we could have done that a couple of minutes ago. Okay. As dominant as Serral looked in game number one, this game is certainly not as comfortable. You see how it leads from the man taking some early game damage? He took a, a couple losses. Okay, I thought that Disruptor was trying to flank, but instead it was just sacrificing itself. Anyways, he loses like 8-9 drones early on and suddenly the game looks way harder. This is also where the double forge is super sweet though, right? Like those double forge upgrades are really allowing these stalkers to be so much more tanky. Many of them have been poking here at these Zerklings and Banelings for ages. The target has been the hatchery, sort of, but it's really just the cost efficiency here. So kind of like playing against Terran Bio, he's trying his best, Serral right now, to stabilize by going into Lurkers. Lurkers are really good for that. But Maxpex is doing an amazing job controlling the tempo of the game. Now, the hatchery on the low ground has been mining for a bit. A couple of zealots over here as well, though, at the other base. Being quite annoying. There's the Lurkers. Six of them coming up. Colossus on the back of this, too. So, I don't know if he's seen Lurkers or Hydras or anything like that, but... He's gonna find out about the, uh, the Spine Boys here in a moment. Okay, that is gonna be annoying. We do still have a Disruptor in the mix. We still have an Observer here too, okay. Getting rid of the first one, not bad at all. But yeah, this is now gonna make it difficult for Protoss to push into this, especially when the upgrades are done. That's the ranged upgrade right now, and we have the, uh, the Speedy Burrow upgrade on the back of this too. Saro can now defend this area so much easier. Uh, probably could have targeted it down, but the units decided better of it for just a heartbeat. We're gonna have to burrow these units now. Yeah, I think you just leave the lurkers burrowed like this. Just keep them over here. 
shut all of this down. There's the Disruptor and the Colossus, though. These are scary units. We don't really have enough here to defend multiple areas at once. Zero is, however, going to try. Oh, good Disruptor hit. Lovely movement. Massive Stasis Vort. Let's go, Max Pex. Okay, Hatchery ends up going down here. Lovely work. In the meantime, by the way, the hatchery on the right side also goes down, and Maxpex has taken his entire side of the map. Maxpex, with a phenomenal game, gets a point on the board. Alrighty. Next up, altitude. I had to run downstairs for a moment to grab myself some water. Mm. Got a feeling I'll be here for a little bit. <laughs> Cyril, yes, doing it again. Double Eric, twice in a row. Okay. I like how this is now known as the Eric opener. I'm assuming that Eric himself likes it even better. At least it would be very good for my ego if everybody's talking about the Eric opener. It's so funny. Okay, so 15 supply hatch. Extractor trick, make a drone. Cancel the extractor trick. Or cancel... <laughs> You get what I'm trying to say. That into an Overlord. There it is. And then eventually, we go into a spawning pool as well. Altitude is, of course, a massive map, but apparently even on this one, still a good idea. Oh! Oh! No way! <laughs> well, that's a mental victory if I've ever seen one. All your probes belong to me! That probe is gonna be such a nuisance though, until the queen is out. Yeah, Max Max is saying, yo, you got my probe trapped in here because of your spotting pool. But what about? <laughs> what about? I just harass you like crazy. Zorklings are not gonna be able to take care of that, so I'll have to wait until queens are out. Look at that probe, constantly trying to disrupt the mining here. Lovely little play right there, though, from Serral. He saw the opportunity and he didn't hesitate. Alright, Queens are gonna have to start up. He's gonna be okay here eventually. That probe, super dead. And honestly, I don't even really know if this is worthwhile for the Zerk. Like, normally it's the Zerklings that would kill that probe, right? Or at least push it away, or... Just the potential for Zerklings being out on the map. Oh, he's gonna recall it! Let's go, Max Pex! <laughs> okay. Mental advantage denied. I don't know if it's worth, but it doesn't matter. It probably is worth, actually. Yeah, in the long run. I mean, if you take the mental, you know, the mental part of StarCraft 2 in mind, uh, it definitely is worth. Alright, it's once again gonna be a Stargate. I think I'm gonna speed up the game a little bit, because we've all seen this a million times before. Zork decides to take a third hatchery. Stargate is going to finish up. We're gonna go for an Oracle. There's an Adept walking around. It got no damage in, it seems. And we're back to regular game speed. <laughs> is it annoying when I fast-forward games like that? I feel like there's somebody out there who gets very angry whenever I do, but... Look, I've already shown you what the early game looks like twice in this series. And I've got a feeling we're going to see it a couple more times at the very least. This is the gold standard. Honestly, I used to skip the first two minutes of every single ZVP after game one if they're doing the same build. Well, obviously in this one, where we're seeing a little bit of variety right there from Serral. I could almost skip the first four minutes. <laughs> For Serral versus Max Max, you can assume that Serral's queens are gonna be in position and that the adepts don't really get any damage in. Uh, you could probably skip the first six minutes of the game. That, you know, at some point you can just skip the whole game. There's a, there's, a, there's a moment where you might just be skipping the whole game. Don't think we want to go that far. But I think fast forwarding every once in a while, when nothing exciting is happening, is fine. I can imagine it can be kind of jarring though, if you've never really watched a lot of StarCraft 2. But then again, I wish it was more common that new players would find the game. But I'm assuming that the majority of my viewers have probably watched uh, at least a couple hundred games of StarCraft. Most people have probably been watching StarCraft 2 for quite a while at this point. Not a whole lot of new blood in 2023. Which really is a shame, because this... I mean, I watch, I've watch. i watched basically every esport out there. 
Um, StarCraft 2, I mean, I'm obviously biased, but it's so much better. I don't mean to be a jerk or anything. I'm not saying your esports sucks, but I'm just saying StarCraft's better, okay? There it is. I try to watch MOBAs from time to time. I don't even know what's happening, dude. It's just a, a light show. If you don't know literally every single hero, it's just a bunch of pretty uh, lightning. Uh, it's like a bunch of Dragon Ball Z characters all fighting at the same time, blinking all over the place, trying to get some work in. It's confusing. Anyways, I think StarCraft is very watchable is what I'm saying. Anyways, uh, we've got ourselves a... I didn't mean to roast other esports. How did I even get there? We've got ourselves Resonating Glaives. Resonating Glaives is the Adept Improvement. So it's going to make the Adepts attack a little bit quicker. How many links do we have? 22 Zerklings at this point. Plus one melee is going to finish up here momentarily. So that's going to be really nice. Queen's old target firing down. The low HP Adept there to the best of their abilities. And Serral does catch this. A couple seconds before plus one melee finishes up. Okay, a few of the uh, Adepts decided to stick around at the third base location. Honestly, such stellar defense here, right? Genuinely. How many times do we see those units shading back and forth and back and forth and back and forth? It's honestly these oracles that have been putting in more work than the Adepts, but obviously the Adepts have enabled those oracles uh, to get that work in. Okay, eventually we are going to go into double upgrades once again. And we're going to be going straight into the blink upgrade now too. So all the roads eventually do read, or they read to Loam, sure. Uh, they lead to Rome here, so he's going to try his best and get to the... Um... I misset that once in a video, like half a year ago. All the roads lead to Rome. I said accidentally, all the roads lead... No, read to Loam. And <laughs> now, for some reason, it's completely messed up in my head. Because I don't use the saying very frequently. And now, for some reason, when I when I do try to use it, I think about it more than I should. And then it, it gets... I don't know. It gets cursed. Everybody's favorite saying, though. Maybe we need to change it. All the roads lead to Washington. There you go. Make the American viewers happy. I don't know if they do, though. I have no idea where all the roads lead in the US. I also don't even know if the roads in the... It, it, no. I'm fairly sure I can drive in a load of directions from the Netherlands and I would not... Poor Zerklings. I would not be making my way to Rome. Anyways, Sarah wants to go for the Golden Minerals over here. Once again, quick hive. Once again, Robo Facility on the back of this. Once again, Stalkers roaming the map. The Watchtower may be destroyed right now, which is kind of cute. So I'm running around here on the other side of the map. That creep denial in the previous game was so key, right? That creep denial then was so important. I think, yeah, Sarah wants to prevent that from happening at all costs. Couple of adepts over here. Nicely done here by the Maxi Packs. A couple of Zarklings here may very well get caught. But economically speaking, Max Pax is in a really good position right now. Okay. I'm curious to see if he's going to play the same game again, though. Because plus two melee is going to finish up here momentarily. Centrifugal hooks lined up perfectly as well. So this is, by the way, beautiful. Because that's... If you, if you line this up well with a Bailing Rollby, um, plus two melee allows you to one-shot probes, right? Which is really nice. Oh, we already have armor upgrades, though. Anyhow. Robo Bay is gonna finish up. Are we gonna go for a different follow-up this time around, Max? So, Max in the previous game decided to do the same thing for basically the entire game long. And honestly, he could do that again right here. I wouldn't hate it. Okay, he decides to go for a single disruptor. Second Robo going down. I was gonna say, in the previous game we had single Robo production, which is a little funky to me. I wouldn't mind seeing a couple more Robos. Sometimes we see up to three from Protals, which I think is really nice. Anyways, two makes a lot of sense here with the current economies. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful play right here by Max Pax. Banelinks, they get spotted. He sees these coming from a mile away. So this really shouldn't do any damage. Spine crawlers over here trying to make sure that those follow-up units cannot do any damage. Okay, we have the Banelinks going around the site. If these Banes still get damage done, I'm going to be very disappointed. That's a lot of Banelings, by the way. Oh, no. 
Okay, nothing great. No, nothing great. Wonderful player by Max Pax. Let's go, Max. Max Pax is such a good player, though. Game number one was a bit of a bop, right? Like, <laughs> game number one is serious. I was like, okay, if this is what we're gonna have. I can't wait to read the YouTube comment section because it's just gonna be filled with people complaining about Zerk. Um, Max is looking really good right now. Yeah. Templar Archive's coming up. Double Disruptor production. Cero is gonna be able to stabilize, though. Yeah, he's going after those rocks. This map is huge, right? And that's one of the problems he's running into right now. Stalkers are going to be able to come back home, but already the probes are hunted down. Yeah, normally when Zerg commits that much to a push, you can retaliate, but he would have to walk all the way across the map. Zealot's now up north. Zealot's over here on the right side of the map too. This Nexus over here at the very least got the knight, and the same can be said over here. This Raptor's trying to deal as much damage as possible. In the end, though, that's a lot of probe losses. At this stage in the game, both players can rebuild economy rather quickly. But obviously, the larva mechanic is going to allow Serral to remake here in just, well, one little production cycle if he wants to. He's still at 87 workers, though, so I think he already did. Now he's also gone for the golden minerals. Eight golden mineral fields. Normal gold bases in StarCraft 2 have six. Golden minerals return seven minerals a trip rather than a conventional five for a blue one. Lovely. Anyways, that's gonna be a big boost right there for Serral's economy. And already, it is looking pretty darn good. Max Pax has been contained on four bases. He's been trying to expand, he managed to expand, but he hasn't really done it. Comfortably, right? He hasn't really been able to get there in a very good position. So, the first ten minutes of this game were going really well for Max Pax. And now the last few minutes have been all Serral. Oh, oh, Disruptor, Novas. Okay, almost getting the Stalker. That's probably not ideal. Oh, there's so many juicy connections possible. There you go. He does get it here eventually. Blows up his own Archon. I don't know if that's ideal, but he ends up dealing a whole lot of damage to the Zerk as well. I think it's probably fine to sacrifice your own Archon. In the end, though, 18 probes end up going down there, which is just a bit too much. We have Overlords dropping creep over here as well. Saro apparently continuing the investigation. Don't really know exactly why this OV is here. These probes do not benefit from it, but at least they get to take a shower. Word on the street has it that Protoss players don't shower, so... I'm glad to see it. Thank you very much, Saro. We do have a lot of links, though. On the back it is, too. And now it's mostly just Stalkers. These are properly upgraded links, too. So, Adrenal Glance is done. Plus three melee is done. Uh, plus one armor is gonna finish up momentarily as well. Okay, this is pretty... This is a pretty good army against... Mass Ling. It's just that I don't think it's enough. Yeah, look at the supply counts right now. Serral's basically doubling his opponent. GG is cold. And Serral obtains the victory on altitude. Next up, we find ourselves on the map Royal Blood. Serral's decided to go for a quick spawning pool first this time around. Now, this is a map with a tight choke point. So I don't think there's really a whole lot he can do. Even if two Zerklings get in, it's not gonna be the end of the world. But Serral mixing it up a little bit in the earlier stages of the game. Warp Gate once again. Adept once again. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's gonna be a Stargate once again as well. Although it sort of depends on exactly what he wants to do. The Overlord is scouting everything too, by the way. So the Lynx don't even really need to sacrifice themselves. They're gonna hang out on the right side here. Uh, okay, one of them wants to go in. This makes it rather obvious, but he's still going to be able to scout exactly what's happening inside of the main base of the Protoss. Yeah, Max Pax doesn't want to put down his tech structure within Vision of the Zerg, but he also needs to put down his tech structure. Okay, yeah, he decides to go for the Stargate over here. That Ling, though. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant movement here by Serral. Really lovely work. Okay. So anyways, he uh, figured out he's playing against the exact same thing. A fourth time in a row. A best of sevens, of course, mean that the first player to win four maps is going to be the victor. Serral now two points on the board already. Looking pretty darn good in that department. Okay, getting the tumor would be huge, but losing the adept in the process would not. I mean, it'd be huge for the Zerg.
there is the Oracle once again. Adept is gonna go back home. The timings obviously are a little bit different because the Lynx... Well, they came out sooner in this particular game. The gas timing is a bit different here for Serral too, so... Max Max making sure he doesn't lose that Adept for free, because he needs it to secure the third Nexus. 3 minutes and 50 seconds on the Nexus is the standard these days. We saw about 3.55 in the previous two games, because I think there was a Stalker added on before the Nexus. Anyways, small little deviation. A lot of Zerklings coming up. Apparently, uh, Serral's very committed to keeping this Overlord around. Don't know if the Overlord itself is very committed, though. <laughs> no, it is gonna get killed. I think Serral probably just gave it up for dead. Maybe he wants to force that Oracle back. It's very likely gonna be flying back right now. Yep. So, in a way, this is a good way to defend against Oracles. As funny as it is. Making a round of Zerklings. Zerklings don't attack up. But you do certainly buy yourself some time. Six queens already available at this stage in the game. Spore crawlers in the main base and in the natural expansion. I mean, this is... Uh, looking locked up right now. I don't really see exactly how Max is going to be able to get damage in. Obviously, he's got three more adepts, so maybe they can fly in and get some work done, but... Good movement here. Lair starts up. Little bit of a deviation here from Serral. Last couple games, he's been going for three and a half minute or so Evo Chamber. This time around, it's a lair at five minutes. Roach Warren was already coming up, mostly as a safety precaution, and now the Evo Chamber on the back of his two. So with an opener like this, I'm expecting plus one missile. So this may lead to an entirely different game. We'll have to see what he decides to do with that plus one Evo. Um, but I don't think it's going to be as Zorkling heavy this time around. Don't know if that's a map specific choice or if he just wants to mix it up. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe you forgot. That's also possible. Yeah, it is gonna be missile. Makes a lot of sense. Now these missile and the roach upgrades are gonna be lined up. Yeah, Lair is gonna finish up. Roach speed can begin here in a moment. Okay. Also a deviation here from Max Packs and not going for the forts together with the Twilight Council. In the previous game, we went Twilight Council and forts at the same time, and then a second fort a little bit later. This now means that the Blink is going to come out pretty early, which is nice, but he's not going to have as powerful an army. Curious to see how this dynamic will work out. Obviously, Stalkers are pretty good against Roaches most of the time. Next is coming up just now. Did we already see that? Serral spotted it. Basically, within a second of it going down, apparently, which is pretty nuts. But he knew the timing better than Max Max, apparently, so... Max Max should have had a Nexus down there, and uh, Serral's like, Yo, bro, you got a Nexus? Oh, you, you started it just now? Okay, great. Seeing the timing is sometimes the only scout you can really get, but it can be very helpful. Infestation Pit already coming up here as well for the finisher. Interesting. Until Roach Speed is done, it's very difficult to actually push all, uh, push all of this back, but it's not going to be too long until both of these upgrades finish. Blink, however, is going to be sooner. And Max Pex does have a little bit of a window here. Yeah. Stasis wards here trying to be annoying. Max Pex is really good at soccer play, right? He does the same thing in PvT. It's a different approach in this matchup, but this is what he attempted to do in game one and it didn't work at all. Also because Neo Humanity, I guess, has a different layout, right? Anyways, yeah. With plus one finishing up here and Roach Speed already done, so I should be able to push this back. There's the Hive, though. So this is like seven and a half minutes into the game. Much quicker uh, infestation pit and lurker than here too. So we're going straight four base, a roach, hydra, lurker. Now plus one melee on the back of it though. That's interesting. Yeah, I've heard players talk about upgrades for lurkers in particular. So the Evo Chamber upgrades for Lurkers are great, because they deal more damage, but Lurkers already, by default, deal a stupid amount of damage anyways. So getting the upgrades is nice, but Evo Chamber for melee might just be superior. Again, excellent dancing here by Max Pex. This guy is smooth, man. Starcraft players, of course, known for their amazing dancing skills. I don't think there's a lot of StarCraft players out there dancing. I mean, I remember watching uh, Hero Marine dance at a whole lot of Home Story Cups. There's a great video as well that they absolutely love at Take TV. 
about Hero Marine uh, having a couple too many drinks and going absolutely wild on the dance floor. Fantastic video. Other than that, nah, Stucker fans not too big on dancing, I don't think. There will be a couple, but... I think Max Max has probably got sick finger dance. You know, maybe he's got like those finger skateboards. He's probably really good at that. Remember those finger skateboards from the 90s? Are those still... Is that still... Am I a boomer? This might just be me being a boomer. Anyways, fantastic situation right here, of course, for Maxi Pax. Um, I don't want to just brush over this, because he just sniped his opponent's fourth base while being on freaking five base himself. That's amazing. He's just gonna continue poke, man. Max Pax, the poker. We need, we need a nickname, okay? We have the finisher, the finish phenom, the night king is what they used to call Serral. We need good nicknames for Maxi Pax. Maxi Pax. Maxi Pax is fun to say, but <laughs> he got a kill on the hatch, by the way. That's sick. I feel like we can do better. Lurker's coming up right now, but Max Pax is like, yo, they're not out yet. Don't mind if I do. Okay, I think he actually overextended here a little bit, though. Okay. With Lurker's out, life's gonna be easier here for Serral. But, I mean, yeah, I really love this right here for Max. Robo Bay coming up. Basically, as soon as he realizes, okay, Serral is gonna have time to breathe right now. He's going to breathe, right? Maybe he'll do a little bit of a roach attack, a couple lurkers here and there, fair enough. But this should give Zerk, or this should give Protoss quite a bit of time to make that transition. So, Stargate's coming up, Fleet Beacon coming up. Um, we have the uh, Robo Bay production coming up as well in the form of Disruptors. So Max Pax is ready to play a late game. Normally this is played a little bit more defensively though than the way that Sarah was playing it right now. And Max Pax is like, yo bro, you gotta be playing this more defensively, otherwise I'm gonna send Zealots in your base. And this is good. This is good right here for the Danish... The Dan... The Dan... I don't know. The, the Danish... Yeah, I've got nothing. I'm trying to come up with nicknames. But, oh, it's Tempest! Really? The Forgotten Protoss unit! We barely ever see Tempest. I really thought it was gonna be Carriers here. Okay. Probably the least played unit in the game right now. Other than maybe Swarm Host or something, but we've been seeing those a little bit again. No, I would say Swarm Hosts are probably more popular right now than Tempest. Those units fading in and out of uh, out of popularity, though. Depends on the maps and the meta a lot. Okay. Lovely disruptor hit. Still, he gets one of those. Uh, ooh, he gets one of those disruptors there too. Lurkers over here, not in the right position, so that base may actually end up going down right there if he's not careful. At the same time, though, there is a base going down over here too. Max Max, hello. Max Max just move commanded in here. Took way more damage on the stalkers than he needed to. Turns out, well, 400-ish actions per minute is not enough, guys. Just play faster. Duh. When you're not fast enough, just be quicker. Ooh. Serral taking a page out of Bly's book. Going for the hatchery here on the right side of the mineral fields. Interesting. All right. Carriers are coming up on the back of this. So these Tempests are really good at picking off those units from a distance, of course, but it's still a whole lot of units. At the same time, oh, lovely, duh, lovely work right there by Max Pax. Putting a couple of those units in stasis. Battery overcharge over here. Okay, good hit. If it's just Lurkers remaining, obviously the Tempests are going to have a great time. I actually think the Tempest should be firing a little bit more frequently. They are definitely faster than Max Pax is making them look right now. Hydras alone are not really that great. Still, though, probes are falling. But it's still 82 workers, actually. I mean, probes are falling, sure, but it's 82 versus 65. Plus one flyer here started up for mech specs. Mama ship gonna be joining us momentarily. We're gonna have some uh, high Templar. Is that just for Archons? It is gonna be just for Archons. So this is gonna be one hell of a Protoss army. It's gonna be a strong one for Zerk as well. You're on the wrong side, mate. You gotta send those drones over there, yeah. <laughs> um, it's gonna be a, a strong army for the Zerk as well. 
But this is not a corruptor based army, right? And even though Hydras do shoot up, they're not great at shooting up. Well, they're, they're good at shooting up, but they're also really good at dying. That's kind of the main problem. Hydras are very much so glass cannons, and... Well, now the golden minerals over here on the right side of the map also get spotted. Max needs to be careful, though, because he's got a lot of supplies still caught up on the production tab. It's very easy for Protoss at this point to be like, I'm maxed out! I'm gonna go fight! But in reality... Yeah, you need to wait until your units pop. Okay. Max, by the way, kept that base alive on the left side of the map, which is awesome. I've got a feeling we got a killer push coming up very soon right here for the Protoss. He's going for whatever upgrade he pleases. Mixing in Storm right now, too, because why not? I don't think he's got a whole lot of Templar. Yeah, only a couple, but still nice. This base is very vulnerable. Next is over here on the left side as well, by the way. Also on the quote-unquote wrong side of the mineral fields. Okay, there's a recall. That's gonna get rid of these Zerg units for sure. What Max wants to do right now is force an engagement. He wants to fight this Zerg army. Saro's not ready yet. I don't think he is. He doesn't have Corruptors. He doesn't have his Spore Crawler for us. He's only got four Spores from the early game. Stalker over here trying to be annoying, poking whatever it can, killing a couple of drones, but I think the main camera should probably be over here. Yeah, okay, well, I think that guy could have flown away, or at least forced a little bit more energy. It's not as dominant, right? I mean, you don't have a bunch of those um, Corruptors on the back of it. A little bit of a hit squad over here, too. Serral is maxed out right now. I don't think he was ever supposed to be here, but he managed to get there. Let's see how this engagement goes right now. We should have Storm. Oh, we got feedback instead. Lovely. Disruptors right now are rolling forward as well, but this concave is still pretty darn good right here for the Zerg. He needs to be careful. Do we have any energy for storms? We definitely should be. Where's the Mama Ship? Mama Ship apparently on the right side of the map maybe as like a precaution here to recall those units away if they need to. Zork Army over here has won the battle against that Nexus. Couple of probes ended up going down there too. Observer trying his best to harass that base, but I don't think it's gonna manage. I'm not liking this unit comp here for Serral. There's the Mama Ship showing up. Don't know why the Mama Ship has been out there for no apparent reason. Probes are falling, but at this point, I don't think we really care that much anymore about probes. Remaking uh, stronger units instead is probably the right call. I don't really like this army movement here from Max Specs over the last couple minutes. It looks very skittish, you know, like he's been doing a great job maneuvering around the map earlier, and now, as soon as we get, you know, an army out that's actually good against the Zerg, he's just sort of cowering. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of it. Maybe he wants to wait for upgrades, right? And I get that. It's very easy to... Uh, Overcommit here, but I think he's giving a bit too much credit to that Zerk army because it's really just Hydras with a bunch of uh, bunch of Vipers. Okay, this is giving Zerk a lot of uh, a lot of time. That's for sure. Max Max is finished up plus two. That's a big upgrade for the carriers. We have a lot more energy right now as well in the Templar. Okay. Do we have an observer here in the mix? I'm assuming we do. There's the time warp going down. Very good feedbacks as well. Sure, you can abduct that mama ship, but the mama ship doesn't care. She's just a massive tank at this point. A drones have already gone down. I think you fight this, man. Go, 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 go. Max, just go. All right. Yeah, there you go. I think they call this the double condom approach right here from, from, from Protoss. That was so safe. He was playing so safe to the point where he's not actually being safe anymore. You know what I mean? Alrighty. Next up, we find ourselves on Babylon. I did fast forward through the first couple minutes of the game. But Sarah indeed once more decided to go for the Eric. Which is kind of cool. Hey, um, I can already feel that this is going to be a very long video. So if you're still watching this at this point... First off, thank you. I appreciate you. If you could take the one second that it takes to hit the like button down below, that would be really nice. I've noticed over the last month and a half or so that the viewer count is slowly going down. I don't really know exactly as to why that is. Maybe people are losing general interest. I noticed other StarCraft content creators complaining about the same thing. Um, I personally try to not focus on viewer numbers all too much, but I do know that videos that have high like numbers or like high like counts generally perform better because... YouTube looks at that and like, oh, this video, 
It's getting a lot of interactions, therefore it must be a good video. And now I'm gonna interact, you know, and, and try to show it to other viewers as well that usually like this type of content. Anyways, if you want to, you can. It is much appreciated. Um, but obviously, you don't have to hit the like button. You can even hit the dislike button if you want to. Although I'd be very surprised if you made it to this point in the video, because I've been recording for a long time. And if you've been disliking it... <laughs> Up to this moment, you're just sitting there, hate this video, but I can't look away. It's like watching a train wreck or, or a car crash or whatever. Uh, yeah, you, you probably, um, uh, you, yeah, if you don't like it, you should probably go watch something else, I'll be honest with you. But, you know, I do, I do appreciate you nonetheless. Anyways, let's see. Metabolic Goose is going to finish up. Oracle opener here once again from the Max Packs. Bitter now, bow. All right. I have about another half hour to record this video. I'm not gonna make it, am I? <laughs> oh, I might be late to my own stream. Okay, well that happens. It's all right. Actually, no. I, you know, I, I usually take about half an hour to eat some food. I, I could skip lunch. I will skip lunch for you, okay? I might eat a little bit on stream or something. Uh, this, this might be, this may be what I, uh, what I end up doing here. I actually had some issue. I, I was gonna record this video about 45 minutes before I actually started recording it, but my audio interface decided, yo, I am gonna do an update right now. I was like, okay, audio interface, you can do an update. And then 45-ish minutes after I started the update, it was still busy doing an update. Um, it had the text on the screen like, don't turn off the device while it's updating. I'm like, well, bro, I think you're stuck. So I did turn off the device and luckily it seems to work. Um, unless I eventually uh, load this video into my editing software and I realize my microphone is not working, I think we should be good. <laughs> I just go. S oh my god, that would suck. Anyways, Oracle's going in right now to get it with Adept. Adept didn't really get a whole lot done, but at least the Oracle sniped a couple of the units. Plus, Protoss hasn't really lost anything yet at this point. Yeah. Good moment here for the Protoss player. Got ourselves a Nexus done. Five minutes on the dot. Very lovely work. There's the Twilight Council, and there's the Forge once again. Okay. Plus one melee here for Serral. Lair coming up about five minutes into the game, a little bit later. Fourth hatchery here also started up, I mean... We saw Protoss going for that Skytol's army earlier, but I think that was mostly a response to seeing what Serral was doing. Serral trying to go into the Lurkers, and sure he got there eventually, but... Yeah, that also slowed down the Zerg progression quite a bit. Okay. How much work are we gonna do? Not a whole lot. Blink once again, together with the plus one upgrade. Robo facility once more on the back of this. Please note, by the way, Hero, um, any of the other Protoss players I've casted recently, there's a unit close to the wall off. Very helpful, so you can actually prevent Zerklings from running. <laughs> Look at him! Wow, that's incredible! It's a door! For some reason, Protoss players at the highest level recently have been uh, all army hotkeying a little bit too aggressively to my liking. Especially Hero. Uh, he's been just letting Zerklings into his base. It's like a little tea party in the natural for the Zerklings. Except, uh, turns out they want to kill probes and not drink tea. It's a bit cursed, but... Hydra Den once again. Bailing speed once again. This is a faster Hydra Den, though. So are we gonna go straight Lurkers? No, we're gonna actually play Hydraling Bane, it seems. Yeah, okay. So Roach Warren indeed was not made in this game. We're gonna go straight Hydraling Bane. I think that's mostly a response to seeing that Max Pex is very fond of going Blink Stalkers in this series. So Sarah's like, yo, Roaches? Eh, kinda nice. Lovely Evo Chamber block. That is hot right there, man. All right, here we go again. Hydras obviously have more range. They're also a lot more, well, DPS focused, but they're lower in HP. Stasis ward over here, okay. Should be much better though at pushing back these Protoss armies, these Stalker pushes, at least in theory. I think Serral is also theorizing that it is better. He probably is also not entirely sure. 
Yeah, without the Hydra upgrades though, they are kind of shaky. This is the first moment where Mexpex sees the timing of those Hydras. Maybe Mexpex is gonna make the assumption here that this is going to be a transition towards Lurkers very rapidly once again. We have loads of Zorklings though. Um, yeah, when Blink is on cooldown, life's a bit tricky for these Stalkers, but... Still fantastic though, my god. Actually so sick, right? These units haven't changed, by the way. The Stalker's been the same. The Oracle has been the same. The Zealot's been, well, mostly the same. For a very long time. Once again, we have an attack right before charge, which is kind of funky. This is the third time in the series we see this, I believe. I think. Anyhow. Robo Bay once more on the back of this. Anyways, Maxpec seems to get more value out of his basic units. Which uh, is easier said than done. Other players have tried, but he seems to just be very good at controlling Stalkers, which is, yeah, really cool. But also not in a cheesy way, you know? Like, sometimes new players come up, and they get good because they cheese every game. But that's not Maxpex. Maxpex is actually playing legit, straight-up StarCraft 2. And even though it always feels a bit dicey, because we see this go wrong time and time again when other players give it a try, Maxpex seems to continuously, yeah, get value out of these trades. Keep in mind, Banelings, while they are incredibly supply efficient, they're not very cost efficient at all. They're very expensive compared to other Zerg units. Now, Serral does have some money. 73 drones, though, is really not that much. So he's got loads of Banes, once again ready for a roll by up north, while simultaneously fighting over here down south. There's not a lot of splash damage in this Protoss army. There's a single Colossus coming up right now. Stalkers over here take actual attention right there away for the Protoss player. Luckily here though, Maxpex was paying attention and he did see the shenanigans over here on the right. Doesn't lose all of the probes, but he ends up losing a whole lot more over here at the front. So 34 workers now ended up going down here and that justifies his attack entirely. We did see those zealots moving across the map too. At least they managed to find a hatchery to kill. But I don't think that justifies losing half your economy. If it's up to Serral, he doesn't even lose that base, but... Okay. 35 workers. So that is the fight that Serral was hoping for. Get an economical advantage, not because he made more drones like he normally does, but by killing the opponent's workers. Extended Thermal Lens coming up right now for the Protoss. That's the ranged upgrade for the Colossi. Colossi are very good against light units, and it just so happens to be that Hydras and Zorklings are light. But we are getting to the point where I'm a little afraid that it could be a numbers game. Plus, Serral is now going into a Hive. Normally with Hive, what you do is you go for Vipers. And Vipers are amazing against whatever Robo Bay Tech it's gonna be. Even Speed Prisms, I guess. Maybe Speed... Uh, yeah, no, Speed... Uh Observers would be a bit funky, but they're really good against both Disruptors as well as Colossi And those are the two main units that are unlocked when you go for the Robotics Bay So as soon as Zerk sees that Usually they will immediately think about Vipers and honestly Vipers are really good in this unit comp anyways Blinding Clouds not bad. Yep. I don't even know if he's seen the Colossi, but he knows that there's a chance for them and If you think about the potential units that can counter the army of the Zerk right now it would be, well, now he knows for sure. It would be the Colossus. Or the Disruptor. Likewise, if you take the Colossi out of this equation over here, this Protoss army is very weak. We're even going up to four Colossi right now. So Maxpex is basically saying, bro, I hope you don't have any counter. <laughs> Templar Archives coming up, so that's probably for High Templar to feed back the Vipers. Lurker then are also on the back of this, so Serral is ready to play a long game. I'm actually a little surprised by that. I don't think he really needs to. But maybe he wants to play this as safely as he possibly can. Zealot run by on the left side of the map, trying to be annoying. Zorkling's over here on the right side of the map, sp uh, yeah, spotting any of these Zealot run bys once again. Alright, here are the Vipers. How many Templar do we have? Zero right now, but you can obviously warp them in and they will have feedback right away. Also, dragging a Colossus into Banelings is still good for Protoss. 
Okay. There's the High Templar, though. They're ready to feed back to the best of their abilities. They're now morphed into an Archon, and there's the abduction. That is expensive right here for the Protals, but not free for the Zerg by any stretch of the imagination. There's one more Colossi. Yoink! And apparently, with that final Colossus going down, Maxpex realizes, yeah, there's really no way for me to win. Gresven, map number six. Yes, map number six. Sarah right now on match point. I just realized this, by the way. I believe that this is the very first time Maxpex is playing a premier tournament grand finals. So Sarah has obviously played quite a few of these at this point. But, um... Yeah, for a very first Grand Finals performance, I'm actually very impressed by Mexpex. Game number one was, again, I, I keep talking about game number one, but game number one was a bit of a stomp. I was a little concerned going into game two. Let's leave it at that. But he's been showing us, no, not concerned. By the way, Sero once again opened up with the Eric build. So I think he's now gone for Eric more often than not, which is kind of sick. Okay, that's also why that Zorkling managed to get in. Did he scout the Stargate? He most definitely did! So once again, standard build here. I'm assuming it's gonna be a Oracle. What? Oracle? Or or right now. Oh my god. Insane. Sarah going for the Metabolic Boost upgrade. Two Adepts here at the front, but they don't really want to commit. I don't think so anyways. Not until the Oracle is out do you usually really want to start fighting. Unless you get a good angle, of course. Okay. It's time to create a little bit of chaos right here. Max Pex is gonna want to try and deal as much damage as possible with the first couple units that he got out. And he'll try and leverage his way into a third Nexus. Okay. Eventually. It's a little bit later than we ordinarily see it. Didn't have the minerals for it here, so I'm not exactly sure what went wrong for him there. Anyways, the third Nexus does pop at about the four minute mark. Mm, nah. nah, it's hard to get damage in, right? That's one of the problems, man. Playing against Serral feels like playing against a brick wall, I'm pretty sure. You can punch really hard, but... The units are pretty much always in the right place at the right time. You know, when you have to settle for a creep tumor, you know, life gets a bit desperate. Okay. Well, one drone. One and a half drone. One and a half drone. Also known as one drone. Hello. Buddy. Okay. We're a little concerned right now for the drones in the main base instead. <laughs> Sarah might accidentally finish that one. That would be a mistake. So I guess it is two drones in the end right there. No! Never mind. It was one and a half. One and a half drones, around it is one drone, believe it or not. Don't, don't believe your math teacher, okay? Your math teacher was wrong. Um, yeah, in the end, I mean, four drones is all right. There's nothing to write home about, though. Mom, I killed four, no, no, nobody does that. Okay, again, revelation here is kind of nice. But it's just a single Oracle here committed. He didn't even kill that Tumor over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And why does the little Creep Tumor have a, a 1 on it? I have no idea. Why does it have a 1 on it? This one has a 0. Maybe it means it doesn't have a Tumor available? Which it never would because this is not the active Tumor. Interesting. I think that's the difference, yeah. That might be a graphical glitch right there on the overlay. Huh, never noticed that before. Okay, once again, blink over here, together with the plus one ground weapons for Protoss and a Robo facility coming up right now. Roach Warren, plus one melee. I believe we have seen this a couple times. Here we go again. How good are your dancing skills here, Max Pex? Have you been practicing your finger skateboard? I was very jealous of the guys that could do the finger skateboarding really well. I got a finger skateboard at some point, like six months after it was cool. Was this only in the Netherlands, by the way? Do you guys even know what a, what a finger skateboard is? <laughs> and before I'm talking about Dutch culture in the early 2000s and nobody even know what it was. Anyways, doesn't matter. I, I thought it was very cool. Um, 
And then I got one as well, after it was no longer cool, and uh, I couldn't even do it. I wasn't even good at it. I could drive around, but that was about it. Anyways, there's the forge once again, the second forge that is. I think the double forge opener has been the one that Max Pax is most successful with. So he's killed four drones here. This is definitely not a bad beginning right here for the Protoss. It's a beginning of a, uh, a start of something, right? That's a very quick fifth hatchery, by the way. I think that's mostly just a macro hatch here. So Sarah may be making a couple of soul macro mistakes. Big Zerkling run by. Ready to snipe the fourth base, and he gets it. I mean, the hatchery, uh, or sorry, the Nexus wasn't made yet. Zerkling over there, going around the back. Careful now, Maxi Packs. Those Zerklings that just sniped uh, the probe are gonna be going somewhere. Got to be going somewhere. Gotta be going somewhere. Okay. Plus one's done. Plus two started up. Road speed now also finished. Sarah already has a backup base. He's got two fourth bases. Also known as a fourth and a fifth. But this really is more of a, like a backup fourth. This is fourth 2.0. 4.0. No, that doesn't make any sense. This is what happens when I'm casting StarCraft 2 for too long, guys. Apparently things get a little crazy. Anyways, again, uh, snipe on the Nexus there is big. Max Specs, careful now, my man. You can't really afford to not have a fourth base. Like, you can try really hard to kill your opponent's fourth. Like, the first fourth, that is. But... You need to have another base yourself as well. I actually think Zerk can fight this just fine. Yeah. Especially with plus two finishing up in about a minute or so. Those fights are gonna go easier and easier for the Zerg. Stasis Ward over here, quite annoying. Couple piles would be nice. Did he just kill that? Oh my god, he just got a kill. Okay, that animation right there of the little cubes falling down only occur when... That sucks. Okay. So, Sarah right now toying with his food is what it seems like. Yeah. He hits a big power spike right now. Plus two together with the bailing speed is big. This is gonna make life much easier right now for the Zerg. Basically, the exact same fights we've been seeing so far are gonna get better. Protoss, though, is gonna catch up in those upgrades very soon. So that's sweet. But now Protoss has been sitting back for a bit. Again, bailing roll by, ready to set up, but Max Max is gonna catch this on accident. Hey, sometimes you need to get a little lucky. Okay, yeah, Serral doesn't even bother. He cancels the Banelings, sees them coming in with the one Ling, and he decides to cancel and go around. Here are the Stalkers once again. Serral now, though, maxed out. Hive started up. Catching all of the Zealots here as well, and now he's feeling a little bit more ambitious, trying to corrosive bile down a couple of the Oracles. I don't think that's what's necessarily uh, ideal, but... Morphing in a couple more Banes would be kind of sick. Yeah, maybe try and go another little, little, little long by over here. Roach is trying their best. Zealots are pretty good units here, though. Banelings over now on the right side of the map. Also, they good. Uh, yeah, they do end up getting denied. Banelings over here trying their best. Don't do it now! Poor Zealots. Anyways, they sacrificed themselves for ire. Okay. You know what? A couple minutes ago... I still don't really like the supply count all too much here for Maxi Packs, but a couple minutes ago this was looking pretty horrible, but now he's got a fourth and a fifth. Or, as somebody would call it, a second fourth. <laughs> it really is a second fourth, though, guys. I know some of you will. It's a second fourth. Could have been a macro hatch. Or a mac macro nexus? Nah, we're not quite at the macro nexus meta yet. Maybe one day we'll have a macro nexus. We'd see the we'd we'd have to see a chrono boost though. Or a chrono boost buff of some kind. Okay, Sarah ready to go for his uh, sledgehammer uh, attack over here. There's a stasis. That's a big stasis. Probes are running away right now too. Banelings are hunting for them. Okay, well, they're running into the arms right there of a bunch of Zerklings. That actually is not the worst of exchanges so far for Protals. Looks like Banelings over here and Stasis as well. Nexus over there goes down. Nexus over here goes down. So both fourth bases go down. I'm not gonna let go of this. Uh, we have the Zealots over here at least trying their best, but this is looking very shaky right now. You guys are awake. Hello. Don't know what it's like to be in Stasis. 
Maybe it's like a coma or something. They needed a moment. I'm not exactly sure. Hmm. Yeah, I think Max Max kind of shot himself in the foot there when he didn't take the fourth base at an appropriate time, right? Like, he was so busy harassing on the other side of the map with just a small group of Zorklings denied that base over and over and over again. Even got the kill on it once. It would have been okay if he killed one of the fourth bases of, <laughs> of Cyril. But even then, I don't think it would have been amazing for him. Okay. Adrenal glands coming up, plus three started up. Hydra then are now also on a production tab. We'll probably be going into lurkers once again. Zerkings here ready to sacrifice themselves against the lasers. Banelings are rolling in. Into Archons though? Nah. He did kill the base. So that's something. Yeah, Serral at this point is a rich man. Not only his bank account, but also his mineral bank account. So, there's a good amount of losses here on the side of the Zerk, far less on the side of the Protoss, but Protoss has been kind of broke here for a long time. If you look right here at the income in the top left-hand corner, you can see that every minute that goes by, Cero is basically outgrowing his opponent by like, I don't know, 30, 40, 50-ish percent. Depending on what resource we're talking about, it, it adds up very quick. Okay, we have another base going up. I think at this point we can consider it a fifth. It's a bit of a desperation fifth, though. He needs two bases at this point. Problem is, 13 minutes into the game, main and the natural are gonna be running out. So you need to send those workers somewhere. Storm is coming up. There's already Vipers out. Serral, though, again, playing it very safe. Both of these guys are apparently fond of playing it incredibly safe, to the point where I feel like it's not really necessary. Um, Lurker then is gonna be great, but it's also gonna force this game to go a little bit longer, I would imagine. Like, Lurkers offensively are always a bit shaky. But I guess you can't stick around on Ling Bane Road to Ravager for forever. Okay, nah, he is gonna try and win right here. We have a couple of Archon abductions. High Templar, High Templar, High Templar! They do survive somehow! Okay, well, in the end, they ended up going down, but... Not before they also got rid of a whole lot of those, uh, those Zerg units, and that was actually A-OK -okay right there for Protoss. Oracles didn't even need to join in. Look at these bad boys. They were ready to, uh, deal with a run-by. Serral right now with a flying into the main base, trying to figure out, hey, are you thinking about making Stargate units? No? Okay, not good. That's not good. At least I, uh, I now know. He just still decides to go into a Spire anyways. He doesn't believe his eyes. Yeah, Protoss has been more broke here than I think Serral was giving him credit for. Not a lot of gas, though, for our Zerk. Twenty-three workers only, by the way, which is really not that much. Okay. Aesthetic defense is gonna get taken care of. Couple of probes are also... Well, one probe, two probes? Yeah. They're gonna end up going down. Ten probes in total, by the way. I think that's probably a decent to the equation as well. Okay. Now we're going for a lurker attack. This is basically the entire Zerk army, because he's got a lot of supply caught up in queens and drones and all that. Stasis ward over here, being annoying. Man, those stasis wards have been killer in this series. Really lovely work by Maxfax. Getting so much value out of them. Oh, except for that one. Serral hoping that his opponent didn't remake some of those units. Instead, we're gonna go for another Baneling rollby. Lasers here, shooting away though at the Zerk army. Yeah, with this much supply caught up in, in Lings and Banes and the drones and what, and like, it's not really an army that can fight against the Proto straight up. Zealot run by over here in the bottom left hand corner. Banelings over here, okay. Most of them do manage to get on out of here. It's honestly not even that many workers here in the first place. We're gonna need a lot more lurkers. Yeah, and they're coming up right now. 14 lurkers, very soon at least. That's gonna make the defense much easier for the Zerk player. Uh, he wants to fight this. 
Max Specs it is. But he also realizes it's gonna be really hard for him to push in there. At this point, Serral's basically saying, I'm gonna give you four bases, but no more than that. He needs to obviously deal with this army, but he believes that he can fight on creep quite comfortably. So as long as Protoss doesn't have another base taken over here in the bottom of the map or on the right side of the map, he's gonna be okay. In about five minutes, the third and the fourth base of Protoss will run out. That is quite a lot of time in StarCraft terms, but... It's easy to overestimate the strength of this eco as well. This is still a very scary Protoss army, though. Okay, Greater Spire, Second Spire, the whole shebang. Serral's going into Brute Lords. I mean, when you think about it, Brute Lords and Lurkers, that is gonna be... One hell of an army against this unit comp right here. Yeah. Brute Lords are actually gonna be sick. If he gets, like, eight Brute Lords out, I don't even know what Protoss would do. You ideally want to transition towards Skytos, but with this economy, Max Specs doesn't have the option. Still though, Max Specs looking for an angle, and this might actually be the one. He now scouts the Brute Lords as... Ooh, did he see it? He might not have spotted it. I think he actually could shut it down. I don't like this warp in location or this morph in location at all. Lurkers! Okay, trying to uh, hide right there from the disruptors. Base ended up going down. A couple of Archons over here getting a whole lot of work in too. That was so dangerous right there for Serral. I think he will finish up the Brutes eventually, but that could have been an absolute disaster for him. Okay, he has to pay the price of a hatchery. I think that's something he can gladly take. Love this as well. Colossus burning drones from the low ground. Not something we see very often. Okay. Yeah, Lurkers are still good at base defense, eh? Even when you bring a couple of Archons to play. This is so expensive right here for Max Pax. Keep in mind, Max Pax is essentially all in. He hasn't bothered making another base. So he probably assumes it's going to be difficult to pull that off, but... Yeah, he's gonna try right now. I actually would have liked to see this base a little bit earlier. I don't know why he sacrificed like three Archons and like five Zealots at the bottom of the map right there. That was a chunk of his army. That ended up killing a bunch of drones, sure, but it's not like Serral is uh, broken that department. Fleet Beacon coming up right now together with a second Stargate, okay. Yeah, still though. Not really a unit composition where Zerk can just go and attack. Like, this is the I don't want to die unit composition, but I don't know if it is the I don't want to or I want to win unit composition, you know what I mean? Like, fighting with these units is very tricky. Serral even setting up a round of spore crawlers, my god. He is playing this so cautiously here. Night is where I'm coming up. Is that how we're gonna attack? Mama ship? Tempest. This Overseer over here is gonna be pretty sweet. I actually am surprised with, yeah, how much wiggle room he's giving Protoss. Sniping this base would be huge. Yeah. Okay, so I think the plan right here for Zerg is to basically try and force an all-in from Max Pax. The problem is when you don't have a real attacking force though, and it's just Zerglings and whatnot for run buys. Eventually, a Nexus should be made. Yeah. The static defense is becoming expensive. There's the Nidus Worm going up in the main base. Infestor's also coming up. Max Pax does have vision of this. Tempest coming in from the back. And while maybe the Worm is gonna finish up... Yeah, not really a whole lot is achieved. Brute Lords over here are gonna push that back easy peasy. Vipers, yoink, yoink, yoink. Just get anything, not the Stalkers though. Okay. I was gonna say an Archon. Archon Disruptor, that's pretty good. Maybe an Immortal, that would be good too. Zerklings once again going in up north. And they right click that Nexus. <clears throat> so Max Specs is maxed. Max Max Specs. He's got some money in the bank. But not a whole lot of money. Right? Like these bases are nice. I mean he's got five base, so that's good in total here, but he needs to He needs to have another expansion here very soon. And I think this one may actually stick around. 
Saral's added on a lot more units that are good at fighting this army straight up, but not as many units right now for the run by. Yeah, that's, that expansion's never gonna happen. Okay. Here comes Max Specs once again. There's now Vipers. Oh, a Viper and Infestors. Brute Lords and Lurkers. Corruptors, Queens. I mean, this is a scary unit. A uh, unit composition right here for. Uh, look at the amount of upgrades as well. Such a scary unit comp. Oh, Zerklings, I guess, can get across the map that way too. That's kind of clever. Neural Parasite is research right here for Serral, so he can always take control of his opponent's army as well. Fungals! That is a scary set of Fungals! Okay, he's trying his best. Fungals and Parasitic Bombs, that's the Wombo Combo right there. In the meantime, I think it's not Zerklings through the worm, but I'm gonna keep my camera over here. Brilliant engagement right there by Serral. It's Lurkers! Yeah! And those Lurkers through the worm will take care of that Nexus really quickly. Mama ship. Caught off guard. Couple of Archons though did manage to get underneath. Why are we not flying that away? I don't understand. That mama ship was flying there, just idling, accepting its fate there. Maybe uh, thinking about its synths or something. Uh, yeah, just stood there and died. That doesn't count as minus 400, minus 400. I love that Nidus Worm over here. Nidus Worm with the lurkers in between these two expansions. That is really clever stuff right there. So Max Specs on five bases. Serral never allowing his opponent another one. Burrow on the ground. Okay. More Stargates coming up. Knight is warm in the main base right now. Lurker still ready to burst out. Zealots get warped in, fair enough, but I don't think you want to have Zealots anymore at this point in the game. Does Serral want to go for an attack though? He knows as well that there's $20,000 on the line for this particular match. He's looking good right now. But it's very easy to still accidentally lose. Nidus Worm over here also gets spotted. Max Specs busy basically just putting out fires everywhere. This does allow the Zerg player here to get in position if he wants to, but... This is one of those unit compositions that requires about 17 arms and multiple hotkeys as well. Lurkers over here, together with the Lynx. They're on the same control group. Oh, Carrier. Okay, does get sniped before the recoil completes. Plus three, plus three right now. Coming up for the Zerg units too. A new Mama ship on the production tab. Mech Specs is bleeding out. Yeah, he got another base up right now, so that's nice, but needs to be so careful. This Nexus is not going to live for much longer. And this was one of the few mining bases of the or of the Protoss. I was going to say Terran, but I don't think that's the case. Lurkers right now also moving in up north. The combination of Lurkers and Brute Lords is very interesting. This is a relatively new thing in StarCraft. Oh, is there enough detection here? I'm not even sure. Oh. Historically, Brute Lords and Lurkers have fulfilled the same role as a siege unit. But they are v used very differently here. Yeah, he's using the Brute Light right now to try and push back that Protoss army. Keep it cornered. 31 probes have gone down. There's not a Lurker over here, just getting kill after kill after kill. This Nexus will probably not be too far behind. Serral showing us why he is the master of Zerg versus Protoss. Not really going for the sledgehammer approach this time around, like we saw him do earlier in the series, when he basically spent all of his money on Banelings, and I guess he sort of did that in this game as well. This one is a lot more subtle. It's a soft contain on a certain amount of bases, and only allowing his opponent limited amounts of economy. That Nexus is, well, still alive right now, but for all intents and purposes it's dead. Here comes Max Specs, though, storming the Brute Lords, trying to get as much damage on this clumped up army as possible. Fungal growths once again together with Parasitic Bomb. Even the Colossi are taking damage. In the end, it's Serral, who's the winner of the StarCraft II Masters Summer for the European region. 
Hey, if you made it all the way until the end of this video and you enjoyed watching, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. And today I also want to give a special shout out to the Patreon supporters. Thank you very much for directly supporting my channel. For now, have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to smile. And I'll see you once again in the next one.